So um, when you're factoring trinomials, we're looking specifically at things. So trinomials, three terms. And we're looking for them where they specifically have an x squared, an x, and then something without an x. So those are the most common things that we are factoring. And there are essentially two different methods, guessing and checking or the AC method. Guessing and checking is great if there's no number in front of the x squared term because it's really easy. But if there's a number in front of the x squared term, you could get a lot of possibilities, a lot of choices when you're guessing and checking, and it's a lot harder and it takes more time. So what I recommend doing is that if there's a number in front of x squared, you use what's called the AC method, which is actually we rewrite it so that we can use grouping. Um, there are times where I still, I will do guessing and checking if there's a number in front, but it depends on how big the number is. So if the number in front is small or if there's like prime numbers, so there's not a lot of choices, then I will still guess and check. Otherwise, I will do grouping. So I'm going to start with what happens if that A is 1, so you just have an X squared. So that's guessing and checking, and it's basically reverse FOIL. So um, it will turn into two sets of binomials, and you're going to have an x in the first term for both of them. And then if everything is positive, both numbers are going to be positive in the second part. If everything is, if you've got a negative for b, positive for c, then both of them are negative. Um, if c is negative, then one number will be positive, one number will be negative, and it depends on the sign of B, on which one is the positive number and which one is the negative number. So basically what happens, we're reversing FOIL. So factors of A, that is the F part. And then the factors of C is the last part. And so you're, you already know basically if, if A is 1, what F is going to be, because it has to be X times X to get to X squared. Um, and then there are lots of choices to get to C, the last number. You need to find the right combination that multiplies to C that will add up to B from the outside and inside terms. That's basically what happens. So I've got two examples here. So the first one, I have x squared plus 5x plus 6. So I know automatically... I have to have an x and an x, because x times x gives me x squared. So now I am looking for, I'm going to write this down, two numbers that multiply to 6, the last number, and add to 5, the middle number. And so this is the guessing and checking part. And it's actually, for 6, there's not a lot of choices because um, when we look at it, well, we know that 1 times 6 is 6, and 2 times 3 gives you 6, but only one of those, 2 and 3, will add up to 5. So you write down your possibilities, and then you fill them in. When everything's plus, those are positive, and that's your answer. It's x plus 2 times x plus 5. So you're reversing foiling, understanding how foiling works, and kind of building it back out to before you, you light it together. So um, this is the kind of fact we're going to be doing most of the time. So this is where you want to get really good at this. You really want to get good at seeing I'm multiplying to 6, adding to 5, what are my numbers? The faster you can do that, then the less time you're spending on factoring, the more time you can spend on other things. The second example here, my variable is t. So I know I'm going to have t in the front of both of them. Now, in this case, I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 6. So multiply to negative 6, so that negative matters. And then we need to add to a negative 1 because the middle is a minus t. So that's going to be negative 1. We're assuming there's a 1 there. So 
I'm still looking at the same combinations of six. So I've got one and six and two times three. So this is the situation where C is negative. So if C is negative, the largest of the two numbers gets the same sign as the middle. So since our middle is negative, the biggest number gets negative. So that means out of one times six, it's gonna be a negative six, and as two times three, it's gonna be a negative three, because the, the biggest number gets whatever that sign in the middle is. And now you're looking to see which ones add to negative one. So one and negative six gives you negative five, two and negative three gives you negative one. So we have the same combination of numbers, but now the signs are different and they give us something different. So that means I have t plus two and t minus three. And now I have factored that trinomial. So now the AC method. So the AC method uses the grouping process. So first you have to factor out your greatest common factor. Then you multiply the first and the last term together, their numbers. And so instead of like here, it's actually sort of the same process here, except that the first number one. So one times six is six, one times negative six is negative six. So you're still looking for things that multiply to six or multiply to negative six. It's just that now we have a number in front to include when we're looking for that. We're still looking for two numbers that multiply to that and then add to the middle. So the idea behind this is the same. But then what we do after that is different because now what we do is we rewrite the middle term as the sum of the two numbers. So instead of going directly to the two sets of parentheses, we have to rewrite the middle so that we have four terms. And then once you have four terms, you go through the factor by grouping process that I showed. So here's how this works. I've got 2x squared minus 3x minus 27. So first we're going to see is the greatest common factor. So I've got 2, 3, and 27. Um, 2 does not divide into 3 or 27, so two, there's no greatest common factor, it's just 1. So I'm not going to worry about factoring out the GCF. So I'm going to go straight to this AC method, and it's called the AC method because you're taking the A term and then the C term. So we're doing 2 times negative 27 and multiplying those together. So that gives us a negative... 54. Now I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to negative 54 and add to negative 3. So we want to multiply to negative 54 and then add to negative 3. So I'm going to just start writing down my combinations. 1, 54, 2, 27. And then this is where a calculator is handy. Um, let's see, 54 divided by 3 is 3 and 18. Whoa, why did I write 77 instead of 27? There. 3 and 18. Um, 54 divided by, oh, nope, 54 divided by 5. I just keep going through. Okay, and then we've got 6 and 9. And now 6 and 9, so I want these to add to negative 3. So it's the same rule as that if the last number is negative, and then the biggest number gets the sign in the middle. So since negative 3 is, that's a negative, our middle is negative, the biggest number gets negative. So these numbers that I'll have on the right are going to be negative. And so the one that adds to negative 3 would be 6 and negative 9. Because 6 minus 9 is negative 3. So I rewrite what I have. First term stays the same, and then my last term stays the same, but instead of writing minus 3x, I'm going to write plus 6x minus 9x, and then I have my minus 27. So I take those two numbers, 
and I turn my minus 3x into 6x minus 9x. And I know they have x's because my middle has x's. So I'm taking something with three terms, and then I'm turning them into uh, four terms so I can do grouping. So now I do the grouping process. So I have 2x squared plus 6x. And then because I have a minus there, I'm going to write plus, and then negative 9x minus 27. And now I need to find the GCF out of each pair. Uh, why is this not up? It's being a little slow. Okay, so the first pair, out of 2 and 6, I can divide out a 6. And then I have x squared and x, so I can take out an x. And th the way this is designed is that you're always going to have an x that you take out of the first term every time. You may or may not have a number, but you will always take out an x. The last pair, I'm looking at my greatest common factor, 9 goes into 9 and 27, so that's going to be my greatest, and because it's a negative 9, I'm going to have a negative 9 as my GCF. The last pair never has a variable that you pull out, so you always pull an x out of the first one, but never the second one. So there's a pattern that you can see each time you go through this process. So now I've got my 2x, and then in parentheses, 2x squared, and I divide out my 2x, then plus 6x, I divide out the 2x. Now I'm going to have plus negative 9, because that's the GCF, and now I'm going to divide negative 9 from each term. So negative 9x divided by negative 9. And then I have a negative 27, which I'm going to turn into adding a negative because I'm dividing out a negative. So that's plus negative 27 over negative 9. So I have 2x. Uh, now 2 divided by 2 is 1. x squared over x. I have an x left over. And then 6 divided by 2 is 3. And the x's cancel. Then I have minus 9, and then parentheses, negative 9 divided by negative 9 is 1, so I have a 1. Negative 27 divided by negative 9 is a positive 3. So we know we've made no mistake because our parentheses match. Those are identical. So that's a good sign. So that's going to be my first factor. So I have x plus 3. And then the second one is what's in front, basically what's left over, which is 2x minus 9. And that is your final answer for factoring. Okay, so I've got one more example of this AC method. Um, so this one, it's negative in front. So we want to look at our GCF. So uh, 8, 51, and 18. So I'd 51, if it was 52, I could divide the, everything by 2, but there's no GCF. 51 is a, is it a prime number? Three? No, it's not. It's divisible by 3. Um, but 3 doesn't go into 8, so we can't divide that out. So th there's no GCF, but because the first term is negative, we are going to factor out a negative 1. So I'm going to just do that in my head. Basically, what happens is that everything becomes positive inside, or everything just switches signs, I should say. I shouldn't say it's all positive. When you're dividing out a negative, it just flips all of the signs. So I have a negative 1 in front, and then now I have a positive x squared minus 51x minus 18. And so we do that because for the ACE method, it's a lot easier if that first term is positive. So to do the AC method, I need to do 8 times negative 18. Oops, that's the highlighter. 8 times negative 18. So this is not something that I'd want to guess and check because there's lots of combinations of things to get to 8, lots of combinations that go to 18. So this is definitely one that I would do with the AC method. Okay, so that is 144, negative 144. So now I'm looking for two numbers. 
that multiply to negative 144 and add to a negative 51. So I'm going to just start writing down all of my possibilities. And because my inside is negative, the biggest number is going to be negative. So I've got 1 and negative 144, 2 and negative 72, um, 3, negative 48, 144 divided by 4, 4, negative 30. Six and let's see, so then we five doesn't go into it, we'll go six, negative twenty-four, and then seven doesn't go into it, and try eight, eight, negative eighteen, four divided by nine, nine, negative sixteen. I'm running out of room here. <gasps> Um, and you just keep going until you start like repeating numbers. So it doesn't divide by 10, not by 11, divide by 12. Okay, that's a, I'm going to kind of move. That's 12 and negative 12. And then at this point, I'm going to start repeating. So, so far now, I've written down every single combination that multiplies to negative 144. And now we say, okay, which one of these adds to negative 51? So 1, negative 144, that gives me negative 143. 2 minus 72 is negative 70. I thought I would almost get there with a 3 and the 48, because if both of those are negative, I get to negative 51. But 3 minus 48 is negative 45. And then we get too far away, because 4 minus 36, negative 32. And we've sort of missed it. So we've looked at every possible combination here, and none of these can get us to that negative 51 that we wanted. So what that means is that this inside part is prime, because there's nothing more that, that can't be factored, because we've tried every possible combination here, and none of them will get us to that middle. So that means our answer is just negative 1 times 8x squared minus 51x minus 18. So sometimes these things can't be factored. So you have to go through the process and check every combination to double check that none of them are going to get you to that middle term in order to determine the prime, and that's as factors as it can get. You would just, well, in this case, if it, we didn't factor out a negative 1, you would write down prime, but we did actually factor out something. We factored out a negative 1. So our answer would, let me rewrite that so it's boxed, would basically be just the thing with the negative 1 factored out. Because we did factor something out. We just couldn't go any further. So it wouldn't be relative prime, it's just prime. The relative prime is something when we're just looking for the GCF. OK, so the last thing is special polynomial forms. So um, I'm not going to show these. These are about recognizing the patterns. If it is some, one of the perfect square trinomials, you have three terms, you can factor those like normal. So you can do, you don't have to learn any special tricks with that because if you factor with guess and check or the AC method, you'll get to the correct answer. So you don't have to worry about that. The ones that I would learn is the difference of two squares. So that is if the middle is gone, and then you have things you can take the square root in the front and the back. So if there's no middle term, so there's no like x term, then it's a difference of two squares, assuming you can take the square root. If you don't recognize that, you can treat it as the, the middle is zero. So you could say you are multiplying to c, and adding is zero. And that you can, if you look at it that way, you can still factor by guessing and checking or the AC method, as long as you're like, okay, my middle term is gone, so that's going to be zero. And then you can get to the same um, answer. But I recommend recognizing that because it's a lot faster. And once you realize what it looks like, um, it's really easy to factor.
And then the other two, these, there is not really any trick. You can't really do these with groupings. So the only way to factor those is by actually remembering the formula. And those are if you have sum or difference of two cubes. And that means you can take the cubed root and get no remainder, no decimals, and things like that. Um, but the perfect square trinomial, I wouldn't worry about it because you can factor that and, uh, and normally and get to the same thing. So I would worry about, I would try to learn the difference of two squares and then the sum or difference or two cubes, or at least have those written down so that you can look at them and see the form because it's all about the pattern. Definitely, it's worth your time to spend a lot of time on factoring because you are going to be doing it a lot. And the faster you can get at this, the faster the rest of the class will go as far as working problems.